Evo2 can kind of act like a chat GPT or, or a generative model for the genome and propose new variations of biological sequences that can improve some downstream function. So this function could be designing a protein that acts as a therapeutic or designing a protein that degrades plastic or that cleans up oil spills. At its most fundamental, EVO does resemble a language model. The first big difference is the data. Language model works on typically sentences or chunks of language. EVO works on DNA. A DNA language model trained on DNA from microbes, from mammals, from plants, from all sorts of organisms that have been sequenced. Biology is very complicated, and it's written in a language that humans can't understand. These A's, C's, G's, and T's, it's a foreign language to us. What we're trying to do with EVO2 is actually make biological design much more easy for uh, the average researcher. In DNA, often you have to have hundreds or thousands of base pairs in order to encode a single gene, just one gene. But any one of those base pairs, if they change, may be functionally important. The model can understand which mutations lead to certain diseases and which ones might be more neutral. So, for example, we show that the model can identify certain mutations in BRCA1, which is a gene that's often associated with breast cancer. Another practical application is in using EVO to do design tasks. In the same way that ChatGPT can generate realistic human language responses to a human language input, if you give Evo a DNA input, it will try to generate realistic DNA outputs. This is very exciting because it opens options in various synthetic biology applications. Say you want to design a new protein sequence, so you can actually prompt the model with a piece of DNA and then just generate new versions of this protein by using EVO2 to auto-complete the genome. And when it generates these variations of this protein, you can test all of them in the lab and potentially identify new proteins that have a better function of interest. And, and proteins are, are very useful because they're these molecular machines that accomplish many important biological functions. All EVO2 models will be open source. Uh, the data will be open source. The training infrastructure will be open source. The inference infrastructure will be open source. This is a change compared to a lot of model releases across the board. It's all open for other people to build on, uh, apply to their use cases, and hopefully to enable community-driven development. And we also think that models are safest when they're open so that the community can actually evaluate them and see their strengths and their weaknesses. We envision this model really being a foundation for other models in genetics or in synthetic biology where people can build applications on top of EVO2 and the entire community can benefit.